If you perceive something new, if you learn something new, it's such a joy. But why is schooling such a pain? <laughs> Somewhere, the way we're delivering it, we have not looked at it carefully enough. We have not put ourselves sufficiently into it. When I was supposed to go to school, I did everything possible not to go there. <laughs> so when I thought of creating schools, I thought we must create schools in such a way that children want to go there. What is the point creating a school that a child doesn't want to go? So if we have to create schools that a child wants to go, I think the adults need to go to school first. So, in a way these conferences are just that effort to put the adults to school so that we, all of you can create schools where the child wants to go. <laughs> of all the different manifestations of human beings, the categories are getting more and more. A child is the simplest and the easiest to make them happy and joyful. <laughs> With such a segment of popula uh, population, which is naturally joyful, I don't see why it is so difficult to create a joyful way of delivering education. <laughs> there is substantial scientific and medical evidence today that if you remain in a pleasant state of experience, that is when your body and your brain works at its best. Some studies are trying to establish that if you remain just one day, twenty-four hour segment in your entire life, one twenty-four hour segment, if you remain without a moment of unpleasantness within you, not a moment of agitation, anxiety, irritation, anger, nothing, just joyful. They say, your ability to use your intelligence can go up one hundred percent in a single day. When… we've always known this by experience, but today there is data, because without data nothing is true anymore. If there is no data about you, that means you're not here. Yes, <laughs> if you did not register your data into the computer, all of us will think you're not here. So without data, you, nothing exists. So today there is data that a joyful way of existence, it will enable and empower a human being to a very high level of perception and performance. So this is a must. How is the question? There may be many methods, but one fundamental is, if you are not joyful, you are not going to inspire anybody to be joyful, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Why <laughs> I should be telling you this? Because is there anybody here that you have not known a single moment of joy in your entire life? Is there any such person here? You cannot be, because if you did not have a single moment of joy, you would be dead. You would have no reason to live. So you know how to be joyful. I'm sure right now if I ask you, would you like to be joyful or miserable in your life, every one of you will say, I want to be joyful. So you know how to be joyful, you want to be joyful. So why do you need a guru to tell you? Ah, yes Sadhguru, I want to be joyful but to kick that butt, you need a guru <laughs> Yes, I want to be joyful, but you know what he did. Yes, I want to be joyful, you know what she did. Yes, I want to be joyful, you know, the weather is not good <laughs> So there is but, 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 if we just kick this one butt out of our life, Creating a joyful education will be a natural consequence. If we are joyful, 
whatever we do, whatever we create, we will make it that way, isn't it? Without we being that, now if I say, let's create a joyful education, it looks like a very complicated problem. If you are joyful, is it not natural that you will cook joyfully, you will serve joyfully, you will talk to people joyfully, you will do everything joyfully? Is it not natural consequence? So right now, one of the biggest mistakes, I would say a crime that we are committing is, we have taken to this western mode of doing things that is goal-orientedness. That is, we want mangoes, but we are not interested in the tree. Soil is not even our concern. We've gotten into this mindset. Goal is the thing, we want this big mango. You have this one, we want this big mango. But we are not so much interested in the tree. Soil is not even in our perspective. In yoga we say, if you… if one eye is on the goal, you have only one eye to find your way, it's very inefficient. If you have both the eyes to find your way, you will find your way. This too much goal-orientedness has made human beings not only in schooling, in life, in the way we create our businesses, the way we run the nations, the way we conduct the affairs of the world, everything has become so skewed and not about life. It is about some product in the end. At the end of our life, there is only one product, which is grave. Either we are investing too much in the graveyards of the past or futuristic. If it's futuristic, it's grave-oriented because that's the only future that's going to happen to you and me. Yes or no? Hello? That is the only future. So the thing is, whether it is schooling or business or anything that we are doing is about how we conduct it now. What will come out of it? Whatever comes out of it, are we doing it in the most beautiful way possible? If this one thing is em embedded in us, methods, various tools, all these the things will come from experts. There are many, many experts. There are a whole lot of people who invested their life thinking through these things. We can use that but to use these methods in a way that it works. We need people who are first of all joyful, who know how to make their life beautiful. If you do not know how to make your life beautiful, this aspiration of making everybody's life beautiful is not going to work. So, many of you who are as teachers, as educators, as experts in the field, variety of expertise that is here. The evolution of the teacher is the most important thing, everything else is secondary. Who delivers this is the most important thing. It's not… we have not invested enough in that. Evolution of the teacher does not mean just more and more tricks about education. As a human being, if the teacher blossoms, becomes a joyful, loving, compassionate human being, above all conscious human being, everybody has to strive for this, otherwise this will not happen. This is not something that will happen because you got a PhD. This is something that you have to work upon yourself. If this process is brought into the teachers, you must see the tradition of this country is this. Usually parents gave away their children to a teacher, an acharya or a guru, took the children totally in his fold because people saw him as an evolved human being. Not just a knowledgeable human being, an evolved human being. So they saw that if we leave our children in there, in his hands, in his or her hands, naturally our children will blossom. So this has to come. This may look like, oh, is this possible to train all the teachers? Why not, I'm asking. For the first time, for the very first time in the history of humanity, 
we have capabilities that no other generation could ever dream of, isn't it? For the first time we can speak to the entire world, it is time we make truth mainstream. If truth becomes mainstream, truth means what really works. If I sit here, what will leave me in the highest state of experience is the truth of my existence, isn't it? If every human being knows what is the truth of their existence, that you can sit here in the best possible way a human being can be right now, you don't have to worry about tricks of education. In those hands, every little tool will become a powerful process. In this effort to make educators, teachers and others who are involved in children's education in this country or anywhere else, we want to offer these things to you, simple tools for transformation, something that you can do with yourself which will leave you in a better place that you… than you are right now. This must happen. It's my wish and my blessing that this must happen.